For years, we've been warning about investing in funds with highly concentrated stock positions. Along these lines, several exchange traded funds have been coming to market, investing in as few stocks as possible, namely one stock at a time. These ETFs not only focus on just one stock, but such investment vehicles often provide leveraged or inverse exposure to individual names, such as Tesla, NVIDIA, Nike, PayPal, and, Pi and Pfizer. Uh, Wes Krill, a vice president of Dimensional Fund Advisors and Dimensional's head of investment strategies, has written, quote, while some investors may want greater exposure to their favorite companies or to express bearish views on their latest favorables, single stock ETFs may be a case of the wrong thing done for the wrong reason. Hi, Wes. Thanks for joining us today. Could you elaborate some more on your thoughts about the dangers of single stock ETFs? So diversification is one of the things that we consider to be the only free lunch when it comes to investing. It enables you to do so many things. It's certainly a risk control. It has a lot of benefits when it comes to building investment solutions uh, to mitigate you know, individual stock risk and also give you flexibility at the portfolio level. But that's just a really important risk control that investors should not be so quick to issue, uh, as is the case with these single stock ETFs. And you know, like you mentioned, there's the component of leverage. It's one thing to lever up. It sounds great, by the way, when you lever up returns, but when you do that, you're also levering up volatility. It's and what, one thing what to lever. Does, yeah, what, what does uh, leverage, let's explain what leverage is. Oh, yeah, good point. So what leverage means is it just magnifies the outcomes from the investments. So for example, if you have 2x leverage, uh, a stock goes up by 5%. If you have uh, levered 2x exposure to that stock and your portfolio goes up by 10%, the problem is the same is true on the downside as well. And so if that stock goes down by 5% and your investment went down by 10%, and because returns compound, that means that the upside you would need to recover those losses becomes even greater with that downside leverage where really, you know, it's going to be dropping by your growth of wealth will end up dropping by a factor of four instead of two. So it's a really important thing for people to be cognizant of. And when you talk about the level of volatility, it's one thing to lever up the market, which has a standard deviation of, say, around 20%. Individual stocks, on average, historically in the U.S., have had a volatility of almost 40%. And so that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about applying leverage. And, and leverage uh, and inverse uh, exposure use, is heavily uses uh, derivatives and other futures contracts, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a way to give yourself more exposure than the notional value of your money. Um, and again, that's going to carry embedded risks for investors. Okay, well, what is the idea then of a single stock ETF? Why not just buy a stock if somebody was really thinking that was the way to go? Why buy it buy in an ETF or a fund wrapper? Yeah, I mean, a big component is going to be that access to leverage, which an investor may not be able to as easily access. Um, there might be other additional reasons, you know, especially when we look at some of these non-U.S. Uh, single stock ETF applications, it could potentially be down the road. It might be the case that their stocks and investors actually couldn't buy directly. Um, mm -hmm. So there wouldn't really be the same option buying the individual stock versus the ETF. But I just keep coming back to this notion that no matter why you would be interested in these single stock ETFs, um, it's adding more risk into the process that investors probably need. And I think this goes or kind of ties in with a longer term trend of what we've seen from thematic ETFs. You know, for a long time, ETFs were being considered inextricably linked to index fund investing, something that was um, safe, systematic, something that did not have a view on where markets were going. Well, now you have thematic ETFs, including individual stock ETFs, that allow investors to reflect a viewpoint that is above and beyond what the market is pricing in and to try and tie markets or try and pick individual securities. So in some ways, this is very antithetical to the original movement towards index fund investing. Sure, but thematic stocks and thematic funds, I should say, are very popular these days, are being pushed a lot these days. You know, they certainly seem to be getting popular and, you know, they're taking on a lot of creative names. There was one I saw the other day that allows you to attempt to ride the coattails of the spending habits of millennials. And it's oddly enough called a millennial uh, ETF. So I think these are always interesting from the standpoint of, you know, if there's a desire for these type of investments out there, someone will meet those needs. 
But at Dimensional, when we're thinking about building investment solutions, we try and look beyond what is a fad right now and think what is a long-term kind of core need for our clients. And you'll see our portfolios designed to target those accordingly. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, Wes. Thanks for having me.